It's BD. So I've had a bit of a mental awakening recently. I don't want to call it spiritual. This is not so much that. But I started to study stoicism. This was to help me get over my anger and misgivings that happened to me in the past. Stoicism is the philosophy behind having your mind be sound no matter what your material conditions are because you can persevere and overcome anything that comes your way. It is the practice of action speaking louder than words. It is the thought process of a man becoming truly great as his spirit becomes unwavering. Now, I know this is all big talk, but as I dive deeper into Stoicism, I'm starting to understand why it has survived for millennia at this point. And the more I learn how I can apply it to protect myself from making the same mistakes I did in the past. One Stoic teaching is that pain and suffering do not have sway over a rational man. Pain is temporary. This is the story of how I let someone inflict pain on me by making me feel like I am not enough. His actions of not choosing me made me do everything to prove him wrong, which was the exact wrong thing to do if I was going to reach my goals and be happy in the process. Now, on top of that, this anger and self-hatred bled over into other aspects of my life, and I'll get into that more in a bit. Now, I began to fully understand the mistake I made recently, but to understand it all, you're gonna need some context. When I was a teenager, I'm 25 now for context. I lived and breathed basketball. That was my identity. I would I played for the varsity team. I would do travel league in the spring. And then for summer and fall, I would do nonstop training. Four to six hours a day. Freshman year, I made varsity and rode the bench. My rival at the time, who was also a freshman, started varsity. Now, it's not that big of an accomplishment when you think about it. There was only three upperclassmen. But to me, it was the absolute worst thing that could happen to me because he was my antithesis. I never understood why the coaches chose him over me. Sure, he definitely had talent. He could shoot the lights out of the ball. But the problem was is that he had no work ethic. He was a schmoozer and a sweet talker. He got on the good side of the coaches. That was his opportunity. I was completely different. Um, I'm actually kind of shy when I was younger. I still am antisocial to begin with now. But I don't like talking about myself. I've always been the kind of guy that actions speak louder than words. It's how I was raised. So I just put my head down and worked. I would not say I was naturally gifted in basketball, like my rival was, but I worked my ass off to get the attention of my coaches. Herein lies the issue. I loved basketball. I devoted my life to it. And yet it took three years for my high school coaches to give me the time of day. And when they finally did give me this opportunity, it was quickly taken away by small school politics. And since I don't play those games, nor does my family, I was benched. And look, I know this all sounds cocky, but to put it in perspective, during my time with the travel teams, my dad met one of the third best coaches in the state. And he decided that it was worth his time to train me. I would assume a man like that who had the cream of the crop come to him would not pick me for training if he did not see my potential. And that's something I didn't fully understand when I first met him and why he was giving me the time of day. He saw my potential when I didn't. So senior year, I finally willed my way onto the court. I played most of the game because one, I'm physically fit <laughs> and the defense would literally just collapse without me on it. Call me the 6-1 Rudy Gobert. <laughs> My rival ended up quitting, you know, typical, and I ended up being one of the main guys. Then it all came crashing down because I sprained my ankle during warmups. Coach shut me down for the rest of the year. All that work I put in, gone. I planned on going to college for basketball, but my experience with my high school head coach killed that dream. He killed the love for the game that I devoted my life to. And since high school, I have probably played pickup five times in the past seven to eight years. I spent four years of my life working to get someone to notice me. 
Someone that did not believe in me from the start. Someone who made me feel worthless. I developed the biggest chip on my shoulder. You could see it from space. I had to get a tattoo to cover it. <laughs> I was always angry. Always trying to prove something. Even if it didn't even relate to basketball, I had to prove that I was worth it. Worth the time to anyone. To myself, almost. And that stupid chip, that demeanor, stuck with me well into adulthood. I was so externally motivated that I would look for the littlest thing, the slightest slight towards me to get myself going, to push myself to the next level. So when my life finally started getting good, cushy job, beautiful wife, bought a house, I lost all motivation because the struggle to prove people wrong was subconsciously being resolved because I had nothing left to prove at this point. That artificial fire, that fake motivation burnt out. I literally went into depression because I had nothing left to prove. I am now 25, right? I graduated college on time, not with the best GPA, but that's a different story. I landed a job before graduation at a Fortune 250 company. I bought my house at 23 and I married the love of my life the next year. Normally, you would think this guy has got it all figured out. I didn't. I was still angry looking to prove people wrong like no matter like no matter the context no matter what my goal was it was to prove someone wrong but what left did i have to prove at that point there was nothing left for me to do so for months i felt like a shell of myself nothing to work towards no motivation just doing the bare minimum and this is when i actually got fat because i didn't see the point and buried my food um buried my feelings in comfort food. Me doing the bare minimum was completely out of my nature. So where did it all go wrong? When I let my basketball coach decide I was not good enough. I took his decision as final judgment on me as a basketball player, but more importantly as a person. Thinking back, back at my teens, I laugh at the absurdity of what my head coach did. He refused to play a player who had the attention of one of the best basketball coaches in the state. All because he made a decision a year prior and he would not go back on it because his ego would not let him. But since I was so focused on proving myself worthy to him, I missed out on so many good things. For one, I had this amazing coach in my corner, not my high school coach, this other guy, who took me to new heights in a helped me hone my abilities so things I did not think I was capable of doing. I should have played for him, but I was loyal to the wrong man because I was blinded by proving him wrong. Because his determination of value was what set me down this path. My dad loved watching me play basketball. He would never tell me this directly because us men suck at showing emotions, but my mom said it was his favorite thing to do. And I never noticed because my head was so far up my own ass trying to show someone up that I missed out on something that me and my dad shared. I didn't realize that at the time, but now I understand what my mistake was. And now something that we both enjoy, basketball, has been tainted by the pain I let this man cause me. I began to hate the game that I loved. What brought me and my dad together because I was so goddamn determined to prove my worth. And when I finally did prove my worth, when he had no choice but to play me, it was over in an instant because I sprained my ankle going up for a rebound. Three years of anger-fueled training sessions, gone, worthless. It did not matter after that. So what I'm trying to lay out for you here is that your actions need to be for the right reasons. I loved basketball. I should have played basketball because it meant so much to me. And that was that. I wanted to be the best that I could be to prove an asshole wrong, when I should have just been doing it just because I loved the game, right? I was doing it to prove someone wrong instead of making my dad proud. <laughs> my short-sighted attitude blinded me to opportunities that I did not realize were there. And even when I did see them, I didn't think I was good enough to capitalize on them. So this decision I didn't even make for myself impacted me for the next decade. I let this feeling of this chip on my shoulder 
rule my life. I had to prove people that didn't even know me wrong to get myself to try to be successful. Obviously with this attitude, it was all based on self-hatred and anger. It made me become someone that was not matching my own ideal. So instead of doing all the things I have accomplished in my life for me, I did it to prove people wrong subconsciously. I went out of my way to find perceived wrongdoings to fuel me when I should have really been striving to achieve these goals for my own well-being, for my own self-worth, for my own fulfillment. I didn't need anyone's approval to be who I am. And that's the problem of external motivation. You are never doing anything just for you. Ever. You are always looking for someone to validate you. Your own internal strength your own actions, your own morals are what should be giving you self-worth. As these are the things that you have control over. Your choices and how you treat others. Everything else you have no control over, so there is no point in getting worked up over it, getting angry, carrying that anger for decades. Because it's not worth it. You're not doing it for you at that point. You're doing it for whoever is the person causing your pain. I let someone else's choice determine how I carried myself for the rest of my life. Looking back at it now with clear eyes and an understanding of what I did wrong, I can now see how truly messed up it is. I lacked full control over my actions, therefore I had no self-determination, right? My self-worth was warped by other people's perceptions of me who did not have my best interest in heart. I have more examples relevant to you. Uh, one of my ex-girlfriends told me I would never be super muscular, but that's a lesson for another day. That's This is what I'm trying to get into your heads. External motivation leads you down a path of narrow-minded focus. You're always looking for ways to prove someone wrong instead of trying to figure out what is objectively best for you at the time. Now. I'm bitching about something as meaningless as high school basketball. Something that I've been done with for seven years. In the long run, none of that shit matters now. But that anger and all the other emotions associated with my time with my high school basketball coach have clouded my judgment for years. Now, not putting value in other people's opinions of your own self-worth is much easier said than done especially when we have literal counting stats on your own social worth online with social media. It has never been harder to be internally focused or internally motivated towards a goal. And I'll be honest, that is just something I'm starting to grapple with. Now, however, I know the mass majority of you follow me because you do not feel like you have worth. Or that one of your insecurities is keeping you from being the man you want to be. You are worried about not being enough to someone, a potential someone, or society as a whole. Fuck them. Plain and simple. Because the moment you start caring about the people's opinions on your own body and your own self-worth is when you have lost a bit of self-control in the matter. Your perception is warped by this feeling of insecurity and fear of not living up to their own ideals when you should be living up to your own ideals it's hard to get over this anger i'm still working through it i got angry writing this script but not at my high school basketball coach but at myself for letting myself get angry at him for a decade for letting these emotions impact me for this long i wanted to lay this out for you so you can begin to see that having a chip on your shoulder is just a way to blind yourself to what actually matters. <sighs> so, this is the beginning of me trying to make myself better mentally. If you like this kind of content, let me know. But I'm still probably gonna make it regardless because <laughs> it helps me understand the material that I'm trying to implement into my own life. So, I'm gonna have the ways you can support me down below if you want to. No, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, this is BD signing off.